officially. Um, we will call the regular city council meeting March 21st. March 21st to order. Call the roll, please. Kirkland? Yes. 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 Thank you. I need a motion to approve the meeting agenda. I, I move that we approve the meeting agenda. I'll second. Any discussion of the agenda? If not, call the roll, please. Shot? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Yes. Fine. Yes. Thank you. Moving on to consent agenda. Tonight for this consent agenda, we have the following items. Meetings of meeting minutes of the March 7th 2022 regular city council payments and contract services. The following contract services I'm about to go over are all for Bolton and Mink. First one is municipal airport engineering, $320. Runway relocation, $50,656.41. One way runway relocation land acquisition, $23,977.20. Runway Relocation phase one, $1,764. Runway relocation phase two, $22,497.30. Runway relocation phase three, $29,460.50. That total is $128,675.41. Tonight for claims, registers, and financials, we have $1,671,898.41. License and permits, we have some tonight. The following have applied for liquor license. Per Economic um, Development Inc. doing business as Hotel Pati, 1112 Willis Avenue. They're looking for a renewal of a Class C liquor license with outdoor service area and Sunday sales privilege. Perry Economic Development Inc. doing business as La Post, 1219 Warford Street, renewal of a Class C liquor license with outdoor service area and Sunday sales privilege. The police and fire inspections have been completed and, as usual, are on file at the City Hall. I need a motion to approve those items. I move that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion on any of those consent agenda items? Hearing none, call the roll, please. Wally? Yes. Fine? Yes. Berkeley? Yes. Scott? Yes. Okay. I guess we're ready to move on to city administrator's report. All right. A lot of what I might have to talk about is within the agenda, but I'll give a quick update. Today, uh, the lighting was a little bit dim in City Hall because we're running on the generators, but um, that's good news because it means that the solar project is coming along and they are working on hooking up uh, City Hall and they had to do uh, quite a bit more rewiring and reconfiguring than other locations. So uh, it took a whole day of a shutdown to get all that pulled through and, and reset into a new cabinet outside. So uh, hopefully by tomorrow morning, uh, everything will be back up and running and we'll be <coughs> going with that. So, um, is that that cabinet right off to the right of your exit door on the yep. other side? Yep. That's I was wondering cabinet. if that was for us or for the yeah. hotel. Yeah. That's not right there. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for me on anything? Is the hotel coming down somewhere or is it still? Uh, it wasn't a part of this project, um, but it's something that could be done in the future, possibly. Um, I think the hard part with that is that there's not a lot, there's a lot of air handling equipment on the roof, so there's not a lot of roof space. Um, so it would have to probably be a canopy somewhere, and to find a space big enough for a canopy that size uh, might have to be a little bit creative, but uh, it's a possibility. Okay, anything else? I didn't think it was part of the question. Good question, though. Anything else for Sven? If not, we'll move on to Mayor Council comments. I only have one thing, and that's just a reminder about our yard waste pickup, the brown bag pickup. Um, that doesn't start till first Wednesday in April. I've noticed some of those are out already. They're just going to get beat all to heck tomorrow and the rest of this week. And so just, just a reminder, as we've discussed previously, it's best not to put those out till the day of um, 
pick up. So I just wanted to give a reminder. Again, they start pick up on the first Wednesday in April. And uh, look in the newsletter because uh, the uh -huh. whole schedule will be in there. Yep. I'd like to bring up a point that the yard waste disposal site is open though, and it's in great shape. Good. And people are using it. It's even better. And they like the extended hours. Had, had a ton of feedback from people all over Perry. See on the street, they go, man, this is nice to have this. This so, is great, whether you've got one bag or 20. Yeah. You know? It's a great addition. Yeah. It is a great addition. Really, it's a good idea. And I got my head all good. I'm glad to get your head done before the rain. <laughs> Other council comments? Well, I've got one. It's official. Our car show will be October 8th this year in downtown Perry, like it was last. We're open to have over 100 cars this year. We had Good. 90 last year. Is that about the same time it was last year? Yes, it was the seventh last year. Well, that's we, pretty close. We then. try and have it in October. It's not so hot. Um, so we're hoping to have over 100 cars. This Plus, year. it helps, I think, people that want to attend a show or just attend otherwise to kind of know at the same time every year they can kind of mark that on their calendar. You bet. Good. Looking forward to it already. Other council comments? If there are none, we'll move on to open forum. As usual, speakers will be, if they're in person, speakers will be asked to step up to the microphone and state their name and address. For the record, individuals speaking will be given up to three minutes for to address council. And of course, um, people in person can take part and anybody on Zoom can take part. So open forum tonight, who do we have? Lindsay, do you have anything for us? Sure. Uh, Lindsay Pasuti, 1119 Warford Street, representing the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just a couple of updates for the Chamber. Um, the Big Boom Bracket Battle is going strong as one of our fireworks fundraisers. We've raised over $2,000 so far, and the Explosive 8 ends tomorrow at 10 a.m. So if you're looking to make some last-minute donations to help one of your favorites push through, now would be a good time. Um, we have, that'll end tomorrow at 10, and then we'll announce the next round at noon. Right now we have David Sheffer um, ahead of Misty Conrad, Michael Penico leading Jim Lutmer, Salvador Lepe over um, Heather Kettleson, and then a really close race between Susan Smith and Ashley Mormon. Um, so those are going on, we'll have another round after that. And then our grand finale will take place at our annual dinner on Tuesday, April 5th. The very next day, we will have the Radio Pie auction on Wednesday, April 6th. So we'll have a really good start to our fundraising um, early on. Another mention with the annual dinner, we'll have two awards, um, both for um, this last year, for the Business of the Year and Volunteer of the Year. Um, so today's the last day to get nominations in, um, but we'll be excited to have our annual dinner again and get together and, and celebrate those successes. Um, and then lastly, our next chamber coffee will be um, at the food pantry. So that'll be April 8th at 8 a.m. Um, we'll also do a ribbon cutting there for their new space. So another exciting thing for the community. That's it. A lot going on, thank you. Anybody else for open forum? Last call, I guess there aren't any. Public hearing. We have a couple of public hearings tonight. The first one's on the proposed fiscal year 2023 budget. The city council has met and discussed the needs of the community and with city staff have developed a proposed budget for fiscal year 2023, beginning July 1. Finance officer Susie Moorhead prepared the fiscal year 2023 budget, including um, projected revenues and estimated expenditures, published a hearing notice um, in the March 10th, 2022 Perry Chief and provided detailed copies of the proposed budget for review of City Hall, and the Public Library and the McCurry Community Building as well as digitally on the City of Perry's webpage. The levy uh, upon approval would be set at $17.99825 and, and per $1,000 evaluation. At this time, the council 
desires to receive any public comments concerning the proposed budget. This public hearing will open now at 6 10 p.m. I can go over you know, the budget a little bit here. Um, the revenues for fiscal year 2023, including the waterworks, is $34,181,629. Of this, $3,042,772 is for property taxes. $5,714,285 for charges for services. Um, the majority of the fiscal year 23 budget is actually um, the wastewater treatment plant project. Um, we have $50 million alone just for anticipated revenues and expenditures for the, um, for the pay requests and engineering. Um, for expenditures, including the waterworks, is $34,736,895. Um, like, like I said, um, the majority of that is for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, the, the levy rate is 17.99825. Okay. We'll leave the budget books out for a while at, at the different locations in the Prairie Center Library. Very good. Um, City Hall is also on our website, periia.org. If people are interested in kind of looking at it in more detail about line item by line item. Okay. You explained it in pretty good detail numerous times, but it'll, it'll be good to leave it out again, I think. Again, thank you for your work. Any other discussion on the Proposed fiscal year 2023 budget for this public hearing. If there is none, we will close this public hearing at 6 12 p.m. Now we will have our second public hearing of the evening for an application of a CDBG grant. The purpose of this second public hearing is to obtain citizens' views and comments on the community development block grant, CDBG application to improve the city's downtown area. This project will be done in multiple phases as it is a large undertaking for the city. The city of Perry plans to apply for a $600,000 um, in community development uh, block grant funds and will use other resources to fund the remaining amount of the project. The project includes roadway reconstruction, improvements to downtown parking areas and alleys, water quality improvement features, traffic um, signalizations, signage, pedestrian sidewalks, and beautification efforts. Again, this is a public hearing. We're looking for any, anyone's comments that wishes to share those. And we will open this public hearing at 6.13 p.m. If there is any public comment, I have uh, a piece to read that has to be reflected in the minutes for the grant application. So. Our downtown revitalization project has been, I've identified since the mid 2000s, has been incorporated in multiple Iowa Great Places vision plans, comprehensive plans, and other community plans. The city has completed many improvements throughout the community and now needs to complete infrastructure upgrades in the downtown area to attract businesses and visitors. The pro proposed activities will be funded through Iowa SRF sponsored project funding, local city funds, in this anticipated CDBG grant. The CDB application is due on April 1st. Grant applications are submitted on a quarterly basis with awards being announced approximately two months after submission. The amount to be requested is $600,000 from the CDBG grant program. And this amount <coughs> is the maximum amount based on the population of the city of Perry. These funds are estimated to benefit 4,385 total low to moderate income residents. This number was obtained from the city and township LMI based on 2011 through 2015 American Community Survey. No land acquisition will be required for this project as the project will take place in the downtown of Perry, including parking lot alley near Wells Fargo and the Warford, and Warford Street from 1st to 3rd Street. 
The city will work with each business as construction begins in front of their business or in the alley behind their business to ensure that they have safe entrance to their business during, during construction and that no persons will be displaced during the project. Project includes multiple phases of roadway reconstruction, improvements to downtown parking ways, areas, alleys, water quality improvement features, traffic signalization and signage, pedestrian sidewalks, and beautification efforts. Do I need to go through this part in the during the public hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, another action on the resolution is the um, adopting our community development and housing needs assessment, which was developed and is in front of everybody right now. I just need to hit a few of those points. Um, so as part of the community and development housing needs assessment, the community developed the community development and housing needs of LMI persons are as follows. Downtown infrastructure improvements, housing rehabilitation, housing down payment assistance, job creation and retention, and housing development. Uh, as you can see later on, they've all been uh, prioritized uh, as to how we need them. And of course, downtown improvements are a high priority along with other housing. Uh, and it's also outlined in this needs assessment that applying for a CDBG grant will be the important uh, way to achieve those goals. So uh, that being said, Liz will make the minutes reflect much more eloquently everything that needs to be in the minutes to apply for the grant, right? Good. Any questions on any of that? I've got a question. <laughs> You're talking about the downtown area and redoing the alleys. Will you redo all of them? Because every one of them is a bad mess. <laughs> Will that all be included in this? So this would just be the alley between Warford and Lucinda behind Wells Fargo Bank. But future phases would replace the alleys that have not already been replaced, which would pretty much just be that bank's bad. The one over here. Yeah, right over um, here. The bank is back probably and forth there. That yeah. Means it. Yeah. So the bank's the worst of all. Yeah, the bank is the worst, and that's the one that's part of this project. Okay. Um, and then other areas would be part of other future phases of downtown revitalization. I, uh, a couple years ago, we applied for some earmark funding through Cindy Axney, and uh, that map really outlined all of the areas, and that would have been a much larger project. Uh, so just kind of, we've, we've formed this project more around how much funding we feel we'll have than, than anything. So as we add funding, we can add block here or block there. So it could be that, between now and when we put this project to bid, we're able to come up with more funding, and maybe we would like to <coughs> add, add a block one way or another on Second Street, uh, but then there's Third Street to go down and around as well. So there's there's plenty more parts to the puzzle to, to get done on this. About how long, in terms of years, I guess, are we looking at in terms of completing all the different phases that we're talking about? So we would likely go design this summer, go to bid uh, this fall for construction next year. And it could be, do you think this would be two construction seasons? Probably not. So hopefully just 2023 construction, okay. but a full construction year. Sounds like there's a lot of good things built into this project. Any other discussion for the public hearing? If not, we will close. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, in I think it was 2016, we did an actual housing needs assessment, which is a full blown assessment. This is something that's much smaller. So it's just a community and housing needs assessment. Um, 
more so kind of balancing that you know, what programs are out there and available that we're using and then and then what is going on so not not so much on the data available and doing housing inventory and housing assessment quality assessment this is more on the assessment of programs and projects and funding available if that makes sense so, yep anything else for the public hearing not really a part of the public hearing, but it does bring up a good point that I think as soon as um, the 2020 census numbers are fully released, which hopefully is this year, um, <laughs> we'll probably be talking with Region 12 about just doing a quick update with new numbers to that housing needs assessment and readopting our housing needs assessment. Because some other grants, I think it's a five year window that they want to see a new full blown housing needs assessment. Um, so it's now time to update that, but we're off a little bit just because there's no new solid data to update that document with. So, okay. Anything else? If not, we will close this public hearing at 621 p.m. And move on to old business. First item under old business is resolution adopting the annual budget for fiscal year ending June 30, 2023. Upon passage of this resolution adopting the proposed fiscal budget year ending June 30th, 2023, the finance officer Susie Moorhead will be authorized to file fiscal year 2023 budget with Dallas County and the state of Iowa officials prior to the March 31st, 2022 deadline as required by law. Need a motion, please, to adopt the annual budget. I make a motion we pass the resolution adopting the annual budget for the physical year ending June 30th, 2023. Second. Any further discussion on the annual budget? Hearing just, none, call the roll, please. I was just going to say again, shout out to Susie. She was a rock star as always this year. And it's a very smooth process for all of us because of Susie. So thank you. Once again, she, she makes it happen every year. Yeah, she puts up a piece of cake. Yep. <laughs> I talked to her this morning. She says it's a piece of cake. <laughs> Adoption of the annual budget before we call the roll. Kirkland? Yes. Yes. Walling? Yes. Shock? Yes. Thank you. Next item under old business resolution readopting the updated community development and housing needs assessment. Federal law requires that a community development and housing needs assessment be developed as part of the community development uh, block grant application process. A community development and housing needs assessment was conducted and reported during the public hearing held on March 21, 2022. This resolution uh, confirms the readoption of the community development and housing needs assessment held during said hearing, making it valid for one year. Need a motion, please. I move that we pass the resolution adopting the updated community development and housing needs assessment. I'll second. Discussion? And one thing I did forget to mention, this is this previous CDBG applications, they were good for two years at a time, um, or two or three. And this year it changed to an annual uh, approval of this. So now every year we'll go through this whenever we apply for a CDBG grant. So it's kind of, it probably won't change much from year to year, but it will be uh, just something we go through. We might even just go through the process at the beginning of each year, just so that it's done for that year um, or around this time, so that it's, it's always good for a 12 month period. Okay. So. Any other discussion? Okay. If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Klein? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Shot? Yes. 
Okay, next item, next item under old business, resolution authorizing the submission of a community development block grant water slash sewer to the Iowa Economic Development Authority, IEDA. This resolution would authorize the submission of a community development block grant, CDBG water slash sewer for the downtown reconstruction phase one project that includes roadway reconstruction, improvements to downtown parking areas and alleys, water quality improvement features, traffic signalization slash signage, pedestrian sidewalks and beautification effort. This resolution would authorize the mayor to sign all documents relating to the grant application submission. Need a motion, please. I make a motion to approve resolution authorizing the submission of a community development block grant water sewer to the Iowa Economic Development Authority. I'll second that. Discussion. We've already kind of had discussion earlier. Any further discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Klein? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shot? Yes. Next item. Resolution accepting a cost sharing grant from the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship, IDLS. The City of Perry, per resolution 020722F, submitted an application to the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Steward Stewardship, IDALS, for a cost sharing water quality initiative, urban conservation grant. And on March 14th, 2022, the city was notified that they had been awarded said grant for the cost sharing um, cost of $250,000. This resolution would accept the grant agreement urban 22WQUI-012, as well as the terms and conditions of the award. It also specifies that the local match funding will come from the city's stormwater fund and the city's Iowa SRF sponsored project funds and authorizes the mayor to execute all documents necessary for this grant. Need a motion to accept this cost sharing grant? I make a motion to pass resolution accepting the cost sharing grant from the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Lands Stewardship. Discussion? So this is one we didn't apply to all to apply for all too long ago, um, but we were awarded this one. Um, and we have initial response that we were awarded the $500,000 grant that we were applied for in that same council meeting. So uh, we went two for two on those, so very exciting. Um, but again, this is for the Iowa Street Wetland Project and that other grant will be for the Frog Creek Stream Bank for stabilization and revitalization. What's that? Could you add beautification? It will be very beautiful. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> any, any other discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Berkland? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Next item resolution authorizing the creation and of the downtown upper story housing pilot program. City staff has been working on a program to assist with financing major re rehabilitations, renovations and reconstructions of downtown upper story dwelling units. This resolution would allow the city to launch this, <coughs> excuse me, as a pilot program. The program would reimburse eligible project up to $10,000 per unit with 50% to be dis um, dispersed at approval of the application and 50% to be dispersed upon completion of the project. Funds would be used for major structural renovations, installing or upgrading fire protection systems, increasing ADA accessibility, and bringing these proposed units up to current building code standards. Need a motion, please. I move that we pass the resolution authorizing the creation of the downtown Perry Upper Story Housing Pilot Program. I'll second. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Discussion? All right. So, kind of a little bit of a change from what we looked at a few months ago. I don't know how long we first sent this out, but. Um, conversations with Daniel um, 
we kind of came to the realization that if we're going to be making these investments in these units, that um, part of that should really be centered around public safety. So that's why we landed on just the $10,000 grant per unit um, and that it would require the building uh, have fire sprinklers installed. So uh, kind of a little bit of a change on that. But other than that, um, most of what was sent out a few months ago is, is what we landed on here. And again, trying out this pilot program um, <coughs> in hopes that, well, one, to slow the grain of my hair, um, but it seems with especially downtown buildings and housing projects, it's really hard for us to get a good grasp on uh, valuations to negotiate development agreements. Um, and then it's still kind of an ambiguous um, a number that we're throwing out and it's not based on much. So this is, you know, again, an attempt for us to try and have a more standard process for incentives, especially just kind of starting with our downtown housing. Um, the other part of this is that um, by taking this grant, they would not be eligible for tax increment financing, which is what we would have utilized prior for tax abatement. Um, so as soon as the project is done, we'll be on the tax rolls and uh, contributing to our general fund and all of our funds as well as uh, school and county as well. So right on the tax rolls, but has a nice incentive from us. Um, so kind of a good way to use some cash we have in the fund balance of local option sales tax to really get some of those big projects going. And again, this is kind of kind of also came out of uh, the grant application for the up, upper story housing grant for the Tin Pig uh, Gamble Block building. Um, so that's, that's where a lot of this kind of came from and identifying the need for it. Um, there's a couple other projects going on or in the works that it's just, this will provide a much more clean cut, clear picture of what a downtown project can expect. So um, I'm going to initiate the program with $250,000, like what was in the budget, um, and kind of see how far that gets us. Uh, and then after that, we can look at maybe budgeting an annual amount or uh, something like that for funding the program. So those are some of the thoughts. I don't know, Daniel, did you have anything? How are we addressing ADA issues? Most of these buildings have yeah. so 30 steps going up to the second floor. Yeah, and ADA in, you know, the downtown historic buildings isn't something that really is pushed or required by code or any of the grant programs, but um, certainly larger grant programs through the state sometimes have those types of codes. I think even the upper story housing grant from the state does not require an elevator, um, but would require fire sprinklers and things like that. So it's just, it's very, very cost prohibitive to put in an elevator in an existing structure, um, especially when it might only go up one floor um, in a lot of our buildings. So, one thing that I've kind of wondered about is access. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Some of the staircases are really wide or something like that. Some yeah. of them are. And, <clears throat> and I think that would be more so something that an individual property owner could put in, but I don't know if that meets an actual ADA. I think it has to be a full, somebody has to be able to do it all on their own and yeah. roll into an elevator and go up and roll off. So I would like to have a better understanding who we actually are serving in those buildings. I would like to see a survey of who the residents are, what their ages are, what their life patterns are, yeah. et cetera. Sven and I had this conversation a few days ago. There is an elevator on the west side of Second Street. 
in the old Elks building. Yes. But still in existence, still running. It's at the very back of that building, it's accessible from the alley. It would seem to me, and I, I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect, I'm not anything, but it would seem to me that there would be a way of opening up the backs of some of those apartment complexes there so that that elevator could serve the building on the south and the building on the north also, or, or a couple of buildings, because it exists, it works, it's easily accessible from the out. Now, I understand that's a far-fetched, out of, out of the, but sometimes you have to start thinking that way to come up with an idea that might work. And if we, if, if we could have better access to those buildings, if we knew who wished to live there, who would like to be moving down that, who would like that sort of environment, we could plan better. We could know better what to do. I don't think we've done that. And I think that's part of what hopefully will come up this program is some sort of monitoring period. I don't know what that might look like, but I think this is a good opportunity for us to be able to figure out, you know, how often are people moving in and out, who's moving in and out, things like that, to really kind of gauge the success of the program. Yeah. I, I would prefer that it would not be referred to as some sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish it would be referred to specifically as a plan that has a direction and has the guts behind it to ask the question so we have to <coughs> I would be happy to have Daniel put that together <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's a great idea yeah, yeah that's that's the question is we want to target it towards a specific population that's right or yeah. pieces the of population it. that wants it you know that yeah. economically needs it or for you know whether it's widows mm -hmm. whether it's i don't know who all's there we need to find out we just need to know and we don't need to have generalities i know just speaking for the patties uh apartments downtown i know they have had very good success with teachers and young professionals. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, in my mind, that's kind of the main target audience for downtown housing that again, help get more activity downtown and uh, hopefully do some shopping and being and socializing. I don't think that's true of the Nudger. Yep. True of what? The Nudger's building. Oh, uh -huh. When I was a young professional, I lived downtown too. Right. No, I need a yard to take care of. That's right. Okay, so good discussion. Any other discussion before we call the roll on this one? If not, call the roll, please. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Klein? Yes. Okay, moving on to new business. First item under new business is resolution setting a public hearing for voluntary annexation. The city of Perry has uh, re received applications for voluntary annexation from uh, Mr. Lamar Koth, Hope K Farms, LLC, and Mr. Carl Stuckenholtz for parcels of real estate located in Dallas County. Adjoining to the city of, per uh, city of Perry city limits, they wish to be annexed. This resolution would set a public hearing for council to receive comments on the matter of voluntary annexation for our April 18th, 2022 meeting. On the second floor of a meeting room of the Towncraft building located at 1122 Willis Avenue, Perry, Iowa at 6 p.m. This resolution would be would also authorize that the hearing notice be published and that a copy of the application be provided to the Dallas County Board of Supervisors per Iowa code. Need a motion to set the public hearing? <coughs> to approve resolution setting a public hearing for the voluntary annexation. Also. Any discussion on, again, we're just setting the public hearing. So this will be about 20 acres um, just east of 31st Street, um, that field behind the houses out there, and then about 160 to 170 acres on the east side of the gravel road by the industrial park in that area. 
comes on. On the east side. Yep. Kind of a L shape. There's two parcels going down and then two parcels across at the bottom. Total of four over there. Five parcels all together. Well, we have to give them public water and sewer and stuff. Will that come eventually? Or uh, that it, it would come eventually, but there's no development on the properties yet. So okay. uh, that would be negotiated as the properties develop. Right. But industrial park, their service is pretty close already right there. Um, and then their service is right at 31st Street. So it's just a walk away. Okay. Any, any other discussion on setting the public hearing? If there's none, call the roll, please. Klein? Yes. Shot? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Wow. Yes. Next item, next item under new business, which is resolution authorizing the streeteries slash parklets program. During the 2020-2021, the city launched a pilot program for a streetery slash parklet along 2nd Street per resolution 0663020C. The rollout and administration of the program proved successful and the public reception has been positive. This resolution will make the program with all the same parameters and within the same, um, and make the same area permanent, within the same area permanent, excuse me. Need a motion, please. Motion that we pass a resolution authorizing the streeteries. <coughs> I'll second. Discussion on the streeteries slash parklets. So very popular program, and I think uh, we'll have a few more buy-in now that uh, if the council would make this permanent, I think there's a little bit of hesitation to uh, make the financial investment if uh, there's a possibility it would only be for two summers. So I know at least one other uh, restaurant that plans on building uh, a streetery, uh, possibly another one. So could could have some more activity out on the streets. Um, definitely helped during COVID to get people out, but then I think people also just got more and more used to being outside and enjoying the outdoor space just as much as the indoor space. So. Um, Daniel did put out a call um, on our little downtown and merchants email listserv um, and received all positive feedback. Um, and I got a couple items of feedback too. So I know people really enjoyed it. Um, and then I think the businesses appreciated it as well. It makes the bus downtown. Yeah, it does. Refresh my memory. What's the start date and end date? for the calendar year when we have the streeteries? No, the end date is November 15th. What's the, what's the start date? April 13th. April 13th, okay. It doesn't just make look more vibrant. It is more vibrant. There's yeah. more it is. people. It is. That's what we need. And relating back to the apartments, I know uh, Danny Splendor, who's doing some apartments right, downtown above Perry Paint uh, is again, very excited about this program because that young professional crowd is the, the target audience that he's going for, for his apartments. And he feels like that's what they'll want to see downtown and be active and social out in the community. So. Okay. Any other discussion on the streeteries? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? <coughs> Shot? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Klein? Yes. Thank you. Next item under new business, resolution approving the application for assistance and training contract with the Workforce Training and Economic Development, WTED. Continue education is an important component in attracting and retaining skilled and qualified personnel within our organization in order to provide our community with the highest level of service possible, the city of Perry's leadership team will be led through the implementation of the um, entrepreneurial operating system or ELS and will help our leadership team get um, better at three things 
vision, get everyone in our program 100% on the same page with where we're going and how we plan to get there. Traction, install, excuse me, instill focus, discipline, and accountability throughout the organization so that everyone executes on that vision um, every day and, and healthy, help your leaders become more cohesive, functional, healthy leadership team. Funding for this type of training is available through the Workforce Training and Economic Development Fund, YTED, and is administered, administered through the Des Moines Area Community College. With the approval of this application, a portion of the cost of the training will be offset. Um, this resolution will authorize the city administrator to sign documents related to grant application and the training contract with the Workforce Training and Economic Development. Need a motion, please. I make a motion. We pass resolution approving the application for assistance and training contract with the workforce training and economic development. I'll second. Discussion. So I was away uh, at a conference last week, and I wrote that uh, summary for Liz. So it was probably wordier than it needed to be, but. It was a very clear explanation of the program and what we'll be going through. Um, I think, so this uh, EOS is based on a book called Traction and uh, it's been given to all of our leadership team to read so that they kind of have a head start and know what's coming. Uh, and also, you know, I think this will be our third WTED project with DMAC. Uh, we did a general uh, leadership team kind of leadership training uh, I think it was 2018, 2020, we did a uh, kind of business acumen type of uh, training for the rec center as they went through their remodel and kind of rethinking what they're doing out there. Uh, so I guess it's every two years, I think something up of how to go for one of these grants. Um, and this year is to implement EOS with our leadership team. Um, what I'm really excited about is this isn't just a one and done type of thing. This is a, uh, like it, it's in the name, an operating system. So we'll continue to utilize this um, and in, have it be implemented for years to come. Um, so this first year is actually called implementation. Uh, and that's where we go through the whole visioning process uh, and get everybody on the same page. and. and really helps establish goals, establish priorities. And some might really get excited about this. It does have a very important component on not only annual reviews, but quarterly reviews. So uh, it'll help get us a little bit on track with some of our HR functions of doing annual reviews, which <coughs> I'm excited for. Leadership staff is ready to go. They are excited. <laughs> I'm sure they all read the book as soon as they got it, right, Susie? <laughs> <laughs> she probably read it on, on the bus. <laughs> I can see a lot more. Go back to school. Yeah. No, but in all honesty, I think it's I think it's good to have some training at least probably every two years. And like you said, this is this has this is a longitudinal kind of thing that it's not just a one and done. You can yeah. you can make it live. Yep. with your team. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Berkland? Yes. Klein? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Next item on our agenda, land acquisition purchase agreement. Resolution authorizing a purchase agreement land acquisition of property situated in Dallas County, Iowa. The city of Perry has a need to acquire property from, from Carolyn S. Karras as trustee of the Omar C. Karras Residuary uh, Trust for property owned in the vicinity of the Perry Municipal Airport known as pa Parcel 12F and 13F legally described in the resolution. This resolution would approve the purchase agreement upon FAA approval for a purchase price of $97,858. The resolution will also authorize the mayor or his designee to execute any and all documents required in connection with the purchase and would authorize a finance officer 
to issue payment at closing. Need a motion, please. Can I make a motion we pass a resolution authorizing the purchase agreement for an acquisition of property situated in this county? I'll second that. Discussion. So are we purchasing or are we just purchasing the so we're, right to get we're purchasing one actual land, which is this one, and this is for the road right of way or the actual physical road. Okay. Um, the next two are just uh, easements, air navigation easements um, above the properties. So, but this one we did have to buy in fee because it's the road. <coughs> Other discussion? I guess on all of these, it's kind of a mixed match of funding of how what's paying for what, given all the different funding scenarios we have in the mix, which Susie and I talked about today, how many different grants and things we have going, which is a good thing at the same time. But, um, some of this will be 90% funding and some of it will be 100% funding. So, and it won't all be the same for each pot of money. So it'll be a little bit of a shuffle, but we're coming out pretty good. This FAA has to approve as a road. Correct. Yep. And it's been, all been through the whole FAA process and they've given the green light for everything on these. So, other discussion about this purchase agreement of land? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Shop? Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay. Next item, resolution approving the permanent um, navigation clear zone easement and acceptance. The city of Perry has need, of, has need of navigation clear zone easements in the vicinity of the Perry Municipal Airport for the benefit of the airport and the general public using the airport and offer to buy permanent navigation clear zone easement and acceptance for Properties in the vicinity of the airport was signed by Mr. Stephen R. Fagan and Margaret L. Fagan for parcel 15F legally described in the resolution. This resolution would approve the offer to buy permanent navigation easement and acceptance for the property legally described in the resolution for a purchase price of $52,900 upon approval by the FAA and would accept the grant easement conveyed in and consent to the recording of the permanent navigation clear zone easement. This resolution would also authorize the mayor or his designee to execute any and all documents required in connection with the acceptance and to record the permanent navigation clear zone easement from the property owner. Need a motion? I make a motion to approve resolution approving the permanent navigation clear zone easement and acceptance. Also. Discussion. I don't understand. Now, they'll still be able so, to crop this, right? Yep. So it's basically just that you won't be able to build anything on it, but right. you can still use it for growing of any crop. Um, nice thing is with the Fagans, we had gone to them on the initial round for the 4,000 feet. So um, they got it all, we've been through the process with them. So it was fairly straightforward with them. So just on a different parcel across the road, down the river. So, so the plane will come in for this, well, not in it. That's right. <laughs> like you skim the okay. tassels on the corner. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They'll just pollinate better. So back up just a little bit, please, because you've already like. Okay. I assumed, from what little I know about it, that we were simply a paying for the nuisance of knowns. That's wrong. I understand that. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're obstructing, for lack of a better word, their ability to build or to do certain things on that land. Right. 
where the planes are going to come in. Correct. Uh -huh. yep. Changes my mind completely. About they can't put a silo or a bar yeah. or okay. a building. Sky, skyscraper or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is simply for basically offsetting that we own everything from the top of your crop up. Yeah. Uh, so. And, and yeah. It, it's a little bit of compensation for the disturbance that we're causing. But they can't treat like that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, okay. I'm yeah. fine. I buy it. But it's not like a nuisance type of thing. It yeah. simply has to do with that property and the, the easement that we need to make sure that nothing is built. Is what is up north somewhere? It was actually this the city the city built a water tower in front of the city's airport <laughs> entrance or not entrance, but uh, runway runway protection zone. So that's that's what this is called. It's the runway protection zone that um, we have to have an easement over and control uh, so that nothing is built there that planes can come and land. And they're the new ones are a lot larger than what they were like when the original four thousand foot runway was built. So they're a little bit longer and a little bit wider. And I do have to give uh, ITC Midwest a big kudos for um, when they rebuilt the transmission line between here and Bayard or Bagley, wherever. Um, we just, I think we just happened to catch them on the right day and mention that, oh, by the way, we're going to be expanding the airport and we'd really like to see those lines be put underground. They said, yeah, sounds good. So as they rebuilt that, all those lines got put underground. I think everybody we've talked to has so far has said we have never seen that happen so easy. So <laughs> well, they, they were already working. We caught them all on a good day. But, yeah. Good deal. Any other discussion on this one? You're not call the roll, please. Klein. Yes. Walling. Yes. Berkland. Yes. Shot. Yes. Okay, next one. Resolution approving the permit navigation clear zone easement and acceptance. The city of Perry has needed navigation clear zone easements in the vicinity of the Perry Municipal Airport <coughs> for the benefit of the airport and the general public using the airport. An offer to, to buy permanent um, navigation clear zone easement and acceptance for properties in the vicinity of the airport were, was signed by Mrs. Carolyn S. Karras as trustee for Omar Karras res, uh, Residuary Trust for parcel 16F and 17F legally described in the resolution. This resolution would approve the offer to buy permanent navigation easement and acceptance for the property legally described in the resolution for a purchase price of $239,692 upon approval by the FAA and would accept the grant of easement conveyed in and consent to the recording of the permanent navigation clear zone easement. This resolution will also authorize the mayor or his designee to execute any and all documents required in the connection with the acceptance and to record the permanent navigation clear zone easement from the property owner. Need a motion, please. I make the motion we uh, approve the permanent navigation clear zone easement and acceptance. I'll second. Discussion. Same thing, bigger piece. Same thing, bigger piece. Yep. Yeah, a lot bigger. Any discussion, or we've kind of answered the questions in our earlier discussion? Yeah. If not, call the roll, please. Berkland. Yes. Klein. Yes. Walling. Yes. Shot. Yes. Thank you. One more item under ordinances. 
ordinance amending the code of ordinance chapter 135.10 driveway entrances driveways and side and driveway extensions it has been brought to the city's attention that large driveways are being constructed that encompass significant portions of a property's front yard the current driveway ordinance does not disallow this nor does it set many standards for driveway construction city staff have been researching and work and workshopping possible standards for driveway construction to include rules for material size and location of driveways that will prevent construction of driveways that are excessively large of lower quality construction or material and located in areas where driveways are not typically found with passage of this ordinance it would modify um, chapter 135.10 driveway entrances driveways and driveway extensions Chapter 135.10 driveways and driveway extensions. I'll second. Point of clarification this is just the first reading tonight of, of three readings, correct? Correct. Discussion? So, I guess for a little bit of background, you want background? Your first? Okay. okay. <laughs> A little bit of background. Last fall, um, even when Mike was here, we noticed that there was uh, a few driveway permits and driveways that were being built that um, the driveway, you know, the entrance was pretty wide and then the driveway actually extended in front of the dwelling and took up a good portion of the front yard. Um, so as it would happen, it just was like October, November and the end of uh, concrete season anyway. So um, we were able to spend the winter researching these driveway ordinances and came up with this proposal, um, but basically keeps all driveways away from being in front of the dwelling portion of the home. So if it's an attached garage, it just would not go in front of the house. It would have to be in front of the garage and to the side yard. So there's a lot of specifics about widths and what extensions. Um, for instance, in our current ordinance, um, you know, it mentions that you can do driveway extensions, but it doesn't say how many you could do. So it kind of left it open of, well, as the code reads, somebody could come back once a month and do a driveway extension and really not have any parameters as to how far they could go, where they could go. So we kind of tried to tighten some of that up, uh, also tighten up some of the uh, what it, materials that it had to be made out of. So uh, anything, any new driveway would be have, have to be a solid surface. Um, and then if a driveway is having a major reconstruction, <coughs> that would trigger having to double check the sidewalks and make sure the sidewalks are uh, in good shape and up to code. So, Mr. Schott, you have a question or comment? This, if I'm understanding correctly, this has no effect on existing. Correct. Parking or, or and, and, and is there, is there, a, is there a foreseeable way of inserting something into this ordinance? That that would go back a little bit. <laughs> Tear out new concrete. Well, no, not not necessarily. <laughs> and, and and maybe I'm saying it wrong. I don't think we're. And this is nothing against anybody current. Please, I don't think for years that we have enforced the ordinance that we have. I know of houses that there used to be. Uh, one example, an, an elderly, vastly overweight lady who we gave permission to put a driveway right up to her front door, across the front of her house. She no longer lives there. She hasn't lived there for years. Mm. I don't know who lives there, but I guarantee you they don't need that driveway in that situation, but they're using it, they're keeping it. There's a car parked there all the time. <laughs> You know, I don't blame them because we have nothing against them. Right. You know, 
there, there's a lot of, of gravel driveways. I have one. I run a gravel it, and it's gravel from the street all the way in. It's well maintained. It's clean and all of that stuff. But yep. It never has been. Yep. And and but but it seems to me that that we should really try somehow to figure out a way of going backwards just a little bit on this. And, and first of all, make sure we're enforcing the rules where they're being violated. And secondly, if there's a way, I don't know that there is, a way to urge homeowners to improve their driveways, it, it's an upgrade to their property. You're going to get back. I understand, yeah. especially in the days of inflation and all of this stuff, that's difficult to ask a lot of people. You know, yeah. you know. I, I would say a lot of what prompted this was the number of driveway permits we saw last year was like 50 or 60 driveway permit, just driveway permits, uh, upgrading driveways. Um, and then in this, there is a provision that if you have a gravel driveway now that you can maintain that and add gravel if you need to, but it's just, if you would choose to do an extension on that driveway, the extension would have to meet this new code. And if you would choose to pave your driveway, you would have to meet the new code as well. Well, so, I'm okay then because mine goes clear from the street to the alley. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah. yeah, so mine too. <laughs> and, and again, with, with driveways, there really has not been much of a code to enforce. And that's really been the crux of the issue um, in the last few years, especially if we, as we've seen more and more driveways being upgraded, which I think is great. It is fantastic. Um, but I think it got a little bit out of hand as to how much people were paving. Um, so this, you know, sets clear limits on how wide a driveway can be so that you can't have, you know, a four car wide driveway entrance to the street. I, for one, would not want to shovel that um, if I had to deal with it, but. Um, if someone starts to work on the driveway, then do these rules and regulations take effect? After three readings and the publication. Well, if, if someone goes in and starts to change their driveway, improve their driveway, take out a driveway, you know, whatever. If, 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 if a homeowner starts to redesign their driveway in, in, to make it less or more, then does this code take effect for what they can do? Yes. But they're and changing I would, it, they're probably going to need to yeah. get a permit. So then one, it would have yeah, once it's passed. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And I would say more so on the, if they're expanding the driveway, right. more than if you're narrowing up a driveway or something like that. Any other driveway discussion? And we did rip a lot of this off from Marshalltown. Um, so kind of a similar socioeconomic community that uh, you know, the had the same problems, set the same standards, and um, we talked with their public works department that happened to answer the phone and he said, yeah, it's fine. And really, any new construction right now is pouring hard surface driveways. Uh, so this is kind of dealing with existing <coughs> more than anything, those improvements, um, but at the same time, still setting setting the standards for our community. And I think, you know, that that's for me, the biggest thing in the front of my mind when looking at our codes is we're setting standards for how we're perceived and how we view ourselves and, and how we, how we want to be. So kind of one of those, we want to have things orderly. Any other discussion on driveway inferences and extensions, et cetera? If not, call the roll, please. Walling. Yes. Klein. Yes. Berklin. Yes. Shot. Yes. If that finishes our agenda, we've covered 
a lot of ground, literally tonight, in our, in our, in our agenda, and, and some things were up in the air, um, especially with the airport. Um, having no other business before us, we stand adjourned at 7, 10 p.m., thank you. Thank you.